Hey. Awesome. Well, I'm glad we figured that out. I know. How are you anyway? I'm doing good, brother. How about you? I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad at all. Good, I'm good, trying good. to be girlfriend before. I was a little bit nervous with this one. I don't know why. Huh? <laughs> yeah, why? Well, yeah, I felt a little bit nervous, but no. I'm good. I'm all good. Yeah. Love to hear you. Yeah, so Carlo, just first of all, tell me a bit about yourself, pal. Like, why are you yeah, man. the life coach that you are? Yeah, so life has been a crazy journey, man. You know, I'm so glad I get to be here. Uh, thank you, first and foremost, for letting me be here. Um, I have been a men's life coach for quite some time now. I've been a keynote speaker. And I honestly didn't know this is what I'd be doing with my life, you know. But it's kind of funny, you know, the, the way life kind of takes you on twists and turns and you don't know what to expect. So I'm really grateful that I'm here. And ever since I was a kid, honestly, I was that guy who was just like really ambitious. You know, I came from a family of immigrants that came from Italy and moved to America. And my dad was like the epitome of the American dream, right? Like he was the definition. He came here with nothing in his pocket and then he built himself up. And me being able to see that from like a front row point of view, that gave me a lot of hope. That gave me a lot of ambition, you know, and that's just what I wanted to be. And ever since I was that kid who's always reached for the stars, I've always told myself I wanted to do something great. You know, I've always wanted to do the impossible. Uh -huh. But I didn't know that was kind of, I was doing it in the wrong way. If that makes yeah. sense. Uh -huh. I told myself that, oh, if I, you know, run a successful business, then that would be proof to me I could do anything. You know, if I make a bunch of money, that'll be proof to me I could do anything. If I get the six pack, that'll be proof to me that I could do anything, you know? And it was this subconscious need for significance and validation to prove myself that I was good enough before I could do anything I wanted in my life. And that was kind of what contributed to my depression then, you know, how I felt suicidal and stuff like that. And I didn't realize how much of an effect it had on me. And then with all the things that actually happened with my depression, well, I'm sure we're going to discuss what that was like, mm -hmm. but it made me feel worthless, man. You know, I felt like I had no purpose. I felt unfulfilled and I didn't know what to do with my life. So I literally just laid in bed every day for a year and it was unbearable, but I'm so glad I went through that experience because when I came out of it, I realized that the impossible thing I needed to overcome was depression, uh -huh. was suicide. And knowing that, I'm so grateful I went through that experience because if I didn't, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be talking to you today and I wouldn't be able to help men all over the world. I wouldn't be able to do keynote speeches, wouldn't be able to do podcasts to help people and serve them. And I'm just, that's just that's, that's like a little bit about me. <laughs> Mate, I've got to say that is already some story so far and i can tell by seeing your content on instagram talking to you right now in a sense of face to face it's just you are an inspiring person carlo i really have to say that and the way you speak you speak with confidence you speak with knowledge and you speak with experience as well you don't just say these things you speak like you have lived through it all and like you're not just this phony kind of person I think that that's just brilliant. I think that's absolutely brilliant of you. I really, really do, man. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, man. It yeah. really means a lot to me. Yeah. So, how, how long have you been doing the life coaching for? That's so, cool. originally, I started my coaching business uh, back in 2020. But okay. at the time, it was more so online personal training. And it oh. didn't really develop into life coaching until um, probably beginning of like 2022 after i kind of broke free from that depression and stuff like that so it definitely evolved mm. so yeah that's i'm gonna say that's kind of what i want to do myself at the minute i'm trying to come out of the education side of life and i want to go into online training and fitness coaching but i want to blend that with mental health a lot and become more of a life coach as well at the same time instead of just go and get that six pack because you can go and do whatever you want to do yeah. I want to be able to make people happier. I want to be able to make people feel better about themselves, more confident, being able to go out into the world, feel like they can take on the world. So I feel like what you've done, what I'm trying to do, 
this was going to be um, a good conversation to say, Carlo. I'm really looking forward. Well, I, like, yeah. I love that. I'm glad we had that similarities. And it's kind of funny you say that because this one like, little quote really helped change it for me. Mm-hmm. Was give the people what they need. So it, well, how's it go? I'm sorry. It's like <laughs> you give the people what they want, but as a supplement, you're also giving them what they need. So yeah. at the time when I was like doing that transition, I was like, oh, I can be the personal trainer that also does the mental health stuff. But it didn't really click for me until I was like, oh, I really want to help people become the best version of themselves. Mm-hmm. And I feel like being the life coach that I am today, helping high performing men, a in addition to like how they can become that fitness nutrition and that that's just like a small subject that i bring in amongst every single topic i discuss and what i teach and i think that was really what helped me was giving them what they want but also supplementing what they need i think that was a really good thing that helped me yeah do you still combine the two together so if you have a call with a client and they do come to you for life coaching do you still implement the likes of nutrition and exercise for them as suggestions to this is what you want, but you also do need this. I do. Um, however, it's not necessarily like, oh, this equal balance. It's more so how can I get you to gain your confidence? How can I get you to overcome those living beliefs that self-doubt you tell yourself? How can we rewrite your story? How can we help you overcome this hopelessness that you're feeling every day? Well, And like one point, it's kind of funny because I actually had this exact conversation with the client I just had before this call (laughs) is in order for us to feel confident, we need to feel competent, right? In what we're doing. So in order to feel confident, we should journal, right? Because when we journal, we're tracking our wins, we're tracking our victories and that make me feel good and make me feel confident. That make me feel like I am this superhero, not by creating this fantasy story, but really looking at my life from a different perspective. Same thing with fitness and nutrition. People, when they do train, when they eat clean, are they not only going to feel better energetically, but they will have that confidence boost that says, oh, wow, I've been working out every, you know, every week for the last three months. I went through, through this giant physical transformation. I feel better mentally. I'm growing as a person, right? So mm-hmm. it only adds to that confidence. It only adds to that self-worth. And that's how those two kind of like marry each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. Because people always say, don't they, you, you get you get this research dopamine, you get all the endorphins when you go and exercise. And obviously the side that you come from where you're now is your profession, the life side. I'm still learning about that. So I still, I will come a lot from the exercise side of life at the minute. But obviously this is where you're going to educate me as well. <laughs> But they do say that is you move, you eat well, you feel good about yourself, you get that fat, you get that confidence, you make, and I said before, you feel like you can take on the world. But it's all the other stuff as well that you don't seem to realize that also comes with it. And I feel like we need more of that and we need more people to be able to spread them with instead of, yeah, not to give anyone a bad word, but that day-to-day person say that it's like, yeah, if you come in, you eat clean, you move, you feel good. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Like we need to dig deep more. We need to know more about it. Why? Why? Why are we doing it? What else comes with it? So, I feel like this is where you start to come in now, and more people like yourself, Carlo, are going to be able to, in a sense, change people's lives even greater. And that's the that's the mission, man. You know, that's the goal. I said, I told myself that I found my purpose that day when that light bulb went off, and man. said, I want to help people who are just like me who are feeling the same way, who felt really insecure, who have these limiting beliefs, self-doubt, and feel hopeless. And they see, they say to themselves, I don't have a purpose. I wanted to shine a light in that dark tunnel and says, hey, I've been there too. I'm just ahead of you. And let me show you what I learned so I can help you. Okay. And I think a lot of people are coming out and doing that for others. And I think this is a great time to be alive because back in the day, I don't think this existed. Like the mental health stuff, like nobody did this it's just like they just dealt with it and they didn't know how to deal with it Mm -hmm. but now there's so many people out there myself included yourself included where all we want to do is serve and help people there's so many i think this is a happier time to be alive and people will debate me on this but with all this knowledge with all this experience and with people sharing their stories 
and being open and vulnerable about it, that's helping people not feel alone. And that's giving so many insights because of one's experience. And I'm just grateful to be here and I'm grateful to help people. Yeah. Man, that, that's it. It's like you said years ago, you could even go back 15, 20 years. Mental health wasn't a thing. <sighs> no one spoke about it. Schools didn't ever bring it up. I don't know what it was like over for yourself, but it, over here in the United Kingdom, we didn't speak about it. It has just become, past couple of years, it's becoming more and more, but it, it's still not quite there yet, where it should be an, a really normal, regular thing instead of I'm talking about mental health because everyone feels banned. So we're talking about that mental health because everyone's in a good place and we can carry on improving it and just more stuff that comes with it. But um, I think that we should now probably start cracking on a bit more into yourself. Mm -hmm. What was your story like? What what was that day like for you when that light bulb went off? Like just Mm -hmm. moments before the light bulb and then moments after the light bulb because I can remember man as clear as day to be honest the man was only a couple yeah, yeah, years same. ago yeah but diving into your life Carl I'm like what, what was it like for you like before the light bulb went off yeah so like I mentioned before you know I've always been that ambitious guy and I've always wanted to live life on my terms yeah and I wanted to create something beautiful for myself you know so I had what I like to call this hell week you know where everything in my life I just felt like fell apart and I didn't know how to respond to it and it was only contributing to everything else you know what I mean so uh in that week it was right before Christmas and right before my birthday so like the perfect time to be depressed so I um in that one week at the time I was managing a gym Mm. and I got fired from that job I had a really serious back injury. I don't know how familiar you are with this, but I had a herniated disc in my mm-hmm. back. I've heard of that before. Uh, Not nice. My L5-S1, and it was so painful. There was a time where I just couldn't walk. Then, uh, I, at the time, I was seeing this, this girl. You know, We were madly in love with each other. We were talking about getting married, having kids, and it was really serious. One day, she just calls me in that same week that says, hey, I want to break up. And then, um, like I mentioned, at the time, I was trying to run my online personal training business. I was losing money out of the ears. I couldn't keep up with it. And I was spending more than I was making. I wasn't making anything. And all this happened in one week. So I kind of took a step back and looked at the bigger picture. And I asked, I was like, what just happened? Like, what did I do to deserve this? Why me? You know, I asked all those questions. And I really just stopped. I quit. I was like, what's the point of me trying so hard, killing myself to make something of myself when literally nothing I do works? You know, that brought my self-worth down. I felt worthless. I felt like a failure. I felt embarrassed, ashamed. And I felt like no matter what I touched, turned to dust, right? Like I, I felt like a cancer. You know, I couldn't do anything right. So since I had this crippling self-doubt, these limiting beliefs about myself, it made me quit. And I said to myself, that's it, I'm done, I quit. And I laid in bed every day for a year. Like I barely left my bedroom. And all I did was try to distract myself from the thoughts I was having. Because along with all these thoughts grew a lot of self-hatred. And it was so bad that I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. Like I hated myself so much. I didn't want to look at myself. I was disgusted. And I would watch TV. I would listen to music. I would play video games. Anything I could do just to not think. And all I wanted to do was sleep. So I wouldn't have to think. And this went on for a year, man. And I just couldn't do it anymore. So there was this time where I told myself, It's not a matter of if, but when I make that one decision you can't come back from. And it was very close, you know, like, like this close. And what helped me overcome that depression, overcome that crippling self-doubt and those limiting beliefs, that story I kept telling myself was 
one thing that led to many things. So one day my family asks me, Hey, let's go out to lunch. You know, let's get out of the house. Let's go out to lunch. And at the time I actually lived with my parents. And that was another reason why I felt really depressed and embarrassed. Cause I was like, I'm in my twenties. I still live with my parents. Like what the hell? <laughs> so at the time my family asked me, hey, let's go out to lunch. And I was like, are you crazy? Do you know how hard it is to leave my bed? Let alone go out to lunch with you guys. I don't want to do that. But they convinced me and they talked me into it. And I said, okay. And that was the most awkward lunch of my life. Mm. I sat there, felt like the only person in the room. I was eating my salad to myself. I wasn't, you know, conversing with my family. And afterwards, when we're leaving, because I rode with my mother, my brother and sister rode separately because obviously they have their own lives and their own houses and whatnot. And my brother was like, hey, let's just, you and me ride together. And I said, okay. And it was just him and I, and then we got home, we parked, but we sat in the driveway for a period of time. And then we had a real great, we had a great conversation. It was real deep. And it felt like it lasted for hours, even though it was only minutes. And he said to me, you're my brother. I would do anything for you. I'm, you know, you're my brother. Would you do anything for me? And I said, yes, of course. He said, okay, because we got to get you better. We have to fix you. I need you to do me a favor. If you would do anything for me, I need you to do me a favor. I said, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, what's the favor? And he tells me, I need you to go on a trip. Get out of here. And I said to him, are you crazy? Like, do you know how hard it was for me to go out to lunch with you guys? Now you want me to go on a trip? Like, I can't do that. And he's like, what do you have to lose? And with that question, that's when I just started to think, right? And I got that feeling of being like time sat still, like it was frozen. I was frozen in time. And I let that question sink in. And I thought to myself, I really don't have anything to lose at this point. Because worst case scenario, if this last attempt doesn't work, I know what I can do. I can still clock out early. And for some reason, that was like a weird comfort to me but i told myself i was like it can't get worse than this so i let those words sink in what do i have to lose i said nothing and then the next thing before i even responded to my brother i made this like mental confirmation to myself and then these two things i would say put me on the path to finding my breakthrough out of depression out of suicide and it was this the first thing was I shifted my focus from the life I was experiencing and the suffering and the self-doubt and the depression. I shifted my focus from that to repeating to myself, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to go anywhere. I want to live my life. I want to be happy. And I was focusing on the life I wanted to live. And I just kept saying that to myself over and over again. And then I don't know how this came about, but I imagine somebody struck a match and you know that like tiny little flame on the match. It's like super, super small. Mm. Well, I called it my tiny little flame and this tiny flame represented the real Carlo, the guy who was funny, the guy who was ambitious, the guy who wanted to help people. And the real me was down there deep, like in my gut somewhere. It was very, very small, like this little flame, but it was there. And I kept focusing on it. And the more I focused on it, the bigger it grew. And then I responded to my brother. I said, okay, I'll go on this trip. And then his eyes lit up. He's like, okay, perfect. Where do you want to go? And I said, I don't know, somewhere warm. Because at that time it was in November and it was a little chilly here in Virginia in the United States. I was like, let's go somewhere warm. He said, okay, well, where? I just said the first thing that came to my mind, I said, Florida. He said, okay, cool. When do you want to go? I said, I don't know, sometime soon. He said, perfect. Do you want me to go with you? Do you want to be alone? I said, please come with me. I don't want to be alone. He said, okay, I'll send you the details tonight. This is a Sunday, mind you. I don't know what's going to happen, where we're going to go. Later on that Sunday evening, I get plane tickets. West Palm Beach, Florida. We have never been to West Palm Beach, Florida. We didn't know what was there. He just picked it because it sounded sexy. (laughs) 
and we were going to leave on that Tuesday. So we get on the plane and we land uh, in our layover and then we get to Florida and the entire time I was regretting it. I was like, why did I come here? I should have just stayed in bed. Why did I agree to this? And I was just full of regret. And that first day in Florida, you know, it was a hell for me. You know, my brother was like, hey, let's go rent jet skis. You know, let's go to the beach. Let's go fishing. Let's do this. Let's do that. And I was like, I just want to go to the hotel room. Like, let's just lay in bed. I don't want to do anything. And then I remember that night, we went to the beach and we sat on this bench right before we got to the shoreline. And I was just saying, dude, let's go home. He said, no, we have to stick it out. Trust me. We let, Let's just stay here. So I said, okay. And then the next day was more of the same stuff. You know, I just didn't want to do anything. And then later, my brother does something. He said, hey, I booked us for something to do. I booked an event for us to do. I didn't know what was going to happen. I said, what did you do? What did you book? A dinner? Are we going to a bar or a club? Like, what did you do? He didn't tell me. He said, just walk with me. Just keep going. Just walk with me. Don't ask any questions. And for somebody who's dealing with like depression, I was like really anxious there. I was like, what are we doing? Are we going to like a cult meeting? What's going to happen? And like my brain just kept working. And then all of a sudden we're at this stoplight and we're in front of the West Palm beach convention center. And for I just, before the light turns green where we can walk, I'm looking directly forward and I see the sign that says what events are happening. And I see Tony Robbins live. And I was like, I looked at my brother. I was like, are you real? Are you serious? Apparently he bought tickets to this event for him and I to go to. We didn't know Tony Robbins was going to be down there in Florida. We didn't know that specific part of Florida, that specific time, we didn't know anything. And my brother just looked on like Google, what to do in West Palm Beach, Florida. And like, that was one of the things he found. He said, this is what we're doing. And he got us into this event. And that was literally divine timing. It was like right place, right time. Like the universe wanted me to be there. And I remember that entire week, like so specifically, like I remember walking and I remember having this feeling and I was like, how did this happen? So we're about to attend this, attend this event. And I remember just sitting in this room full of like 10,000 people. And I wasn't like convinced yet. I wasn't like, oh, this is good. Like, we're going to have fun. Like, it's going to be amazing. My life is saved. Like, I didn't feel that at all. I just remember sitting alone in this room full of 10,000 people. And I said to myself, I hope this isn't just like an experience, like a concert or like a vacation of how like, oh, you have fun for the time being. But then by the time you leave, it's like, okay, it's like, okay, back to reality. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I didn't want it to be like that. You know, I was like, if this is my last attempt, I need to make it count. I really want this to be it. I'm so glad that my theory was wrong because what I learned at that event, and again, I'm not a spokesperson. I'm not working for Tony Robbins. You know, one day I'll be speaking on his stage. I guarantee that. But what I learned there saved my life. And what I realized that I had all the answers in me already to overcome that depression, that hopelessness, that self-doubt, that those insecurities, that limiting belief I told myself that I was a failure, that... I have no purpose in life. I'm not good enough. I had everything inside of me already. And that moment when that light bulb went off, again, I felt that feeling of being alone, like time sits still in a room of 10,000 people. And it was just me and like the universe or me and God, whatever you want to believe. And I like, it was so weird. It's like, I was on uh, narcotics, which I promise I wasn't. I wasn't on psychedelics, but it was like, I had this experience, like the universe literally spoke to me and it was like, you have work to do. Like, this is what you're going to do. And it hit me as clear as day. It was like this telepathic communication. And it said, my purpose is to help people. And this is how I'm going to help men just like me. Those 
high achieving, high performing men overcome those feelings of hopelessness, depression, help them overcome that self doubt, those limiting beliefs, show them that they have purpose. And that's where like the light bulb went in my head and said, this is what I'm supposed to do. Oh. This is why I'm here. And ever since then, that's the path I've been on. Oh, oh man, that, that is some incredible story. I must say that. That is absolutely fantastic. And the fact that you turned up and it was Tony Robbins, that's a little <laughs> bonus point. But it's amazing how much, and that's speaking from both of us right now, how much you can remember of your story. How, how, all the little fine details, the little conversations, the, how the day was, what the weather was like, anything that, and yours was about that week. Mine was roughly about one to two weeks, and you just remembered everything. But the fact that you were able to get up, you were able to go all the way to the other side of the country and go on this vacation, even though you wanted to stay in bed. <laughs> That's the main part. But you got up, you went out, you listened to your brother, you listened to someone that you loved, you'd done the favour, and that's what we need to do more, don't we? Like, yeah. How many people do you come across when they come to you for help, and it's a lot of the same, similar stuff that you come across? Is it? It's, it's pretty much like the same thing over and over again. You know, It's oh. this apathy, it's this same story that they tell themselves that says, yeah, I've done this before and it didn't work. Or, you know, I did therapy and it didn't work. You know, I'm not meant to be happy. I'm not meant to have a purpose. And it's like the same thing over and over again. And it's so hard for somebody to realize that this story they're telling themselves is false. Mm -hmm. And I see that pretty com it's pretty common. Yeah. How do you how would you go about it then? So for the average man that comes to you, like just a generic man that comes to you, but the same type of issues that the last 10 clients have came to you. Uh, what's your way? How do you go about it? Well, for me, one thing I really understood is that no matter what I tell you, no matter what I teach you, if you're not in the right state to accept the information, you're never going to really accept it. You know yeah. what I mean? So a good example, and uh, my mentor told me this, is that you cannot solve your problem from the same energy that it was created. And that was like, that was like a light bulb for me. And that really resonated with what I learned at the conference is that if I'm in this state the entire time where I'm just depressed, I'm laying in bed and I'm just like this and I'm not, I'm not moving and somebody tries to give me the answers like I did those couple of years ago when I spoke to my therapist, when I spoke to my family, that's exactly the state I was in. And even though they're giving me valuable information, even when I was researching on YouTube, how to overcome depression. Like that stuff, like it was valuable information, but it didn't help me because I was not in the right state. Yeah. So if I were to make that example really like simple, it's if you're in university or in school, or whatever, and your teacher says, hey, here's a math test, but hey, John, here are all the answers. I have a cheat sheet for you. Here you go. On a normal day, you would accept it. But today... Your classmate sat next to you, spilled hot coffee on you, and you're mad, you're burned, you, you're you not in the state to accept anything. So if your teacher says, hey, John, here are the answers, you're saying, bugger off, like, shut up, like, I don't care what you, what you have to say. Like, look at me right now. Mm. That's the way I understood it. So anybody that comes to me and says, you know, oh, yeah, I've heard that, I've heard that, that didn't work, that didn't work, they were not in the right state to accept the information. So what really helped me is that when I changed my physiology, that's where like the light bulb went off. Like that is literally like part one of how my life got saved when I was in that event and when the light bulb went off is when I'm up and I'm moving my body and I'm alert and I'm radically changing my physiology, that's sending a signal to my brain that not only reduces those symptoms of self-doubt, depression, anger, anxiety, fear, but it makes me feel better, but puts me in a state of clarity where I can make better decisions. So the first thing I would say is, hey, get up, let's move. We need to move your physiology, move, move your body, we need to change because you will feel 100% better. And you're going to literally ask yourself when you're done, because I asked this to myself too the first time I did it. We were, I mean, it's a Tony Robbins event, so you're dancing, you're moving around, and there, there was a reason for it. 
Because when we were done, I literally asked myself, I was like, why don't I feel depressed right now? Like, why do I feel good? Mm. And that was why. Because I was moving and I was in the right state. And then when I was in the right state, that's where I started to absorb all of this information like a sponge. And that's what really helped me. So that's probably the first thing I would do to somebody. Yeah. I didn't, I've never even think about it like that either. So when you're saying about the Tony Robbins event and he gets everyone up and he starts, they start dancing. If I went there and especially the area that I come from, we'd probably think, oh, this is a bit stupid. This, what are we doing right now? Yeah, yeah. The physiology part of it, you would never think of that. Like, get up, you start moving already, you're automatically going to start feeling better, you the connection in your body to your muscles up to your brain, everything's going to feel better. And then that's going to put you in the right state of mind then to start opening up to more, to listening and to start accept. oh my God, I've never thought about it like that. Yeah, you've never seen a guy pissed off when he's dancing, right? Yes, that is very true. You never see anyone angry, sad, upset when they're dancing. I'm going to take so that one off you. When we're in a different state, we are in a different state to accept information. Yeah. Right? Mm, I like that. That's a, that's a very, very good way to do it. And if I ever get more clients, or when I get more clients in the future, I'm going to start telling them to start dancing first. <laughs> yeah, I know it sounds too stupid, especially when we work with men in particular. It's like, yeah, I'm too macho for that. That sounds ridiculous, childish. But if you do not play full out, if you don't immerse yourself in this new experience, you're never going to find the breakthrough, right? Mm -hmm. If you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you get the same result. Mm -hmm. So once you open your mind to the suggestion, to the new experience, that's where change happens. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed as well when it comes to men, because it really clicked to me before when you said the real Carlo was deep, deep inside, and the Carlo, he's funny, he's energetic, he's ambitious. That's exactly how I am as well. I'm upbeat, I'm going, I want to achieve so much in the world, I want to help loads of people. Do you find, and correct me if I'm completely wrong, but do you find a lot of men that go through anxiety, depression, any type of real mental health stage are the people that have got like them really big bubbly, bubbly personalities and they kind of lose touch of themselves? I would say so, yeah. And for me, it wasn't that I had this like pre-diagnosis of that. It was I became this different person from this trauma from that week yeah. right and i became literally a different person and i think even from that that real person is still down there somewhere you yeah. know what i mean and i'm sure you could probably speak from your experience too when you were going through that there were still times where you might have had this one percent of inspiration of like huh i feel kind of good today or i'm laughing like there's always that one percent where you feel like yourself mm -hmm. i think everybody has that yeah Mm. yeah as I say there's... I think a lot of people that I've come across that have said that they've gone through the trauma and they've gone through their stages of depression or they've gone through really bad stages of anxiety it always seems to be people that I thought wow I never thought you would be that guy I always thought you'd be really happy I never thought it would hit you this hard and then you mm. come across people where they're not as bubbly they're not as loud and joyful and there's no bad word against them but the they never seem to bring that up they never seem to say oh I've, I've gone through this and they could just be masking and they could be hard in it mm -hmm. but it's a lot more common and a lot more upbeat energetic men that have mm -hmm. had things going for them or they're trying to really achieve something and i thought maybe that's just with us being men that we want to be achieving things and we want to be ambitious and we want to be providers we want to be like the really good men and if it's not working out for us do we just seem to now convert back to that do we seem to go into our into a hole inside ourselves and we let like the darkness take over i don't know it's mm. it's one that i've been trying to crack for a good few months and especially since i've started the podcast i think one thing that i really understood is that Speaking of us, because we're similar to that feeling of ambition, we want to be providers, we want to succeed, is that we attach our identity to that. Yeah, We attach that our identity to, I am this personal trainer, this life coach, I am a successful person. And when we don't 
when our external world doesn't reflect that with our identity, we have this identity crisis. Yeah. Right. So it's like, if somebody says, Oh, I'm an accountant, I'm a great mother, I'm a great father, a great husband. They're using something that's external from themselves as their identity. And then when yeah. something shakes it, it's like their identity is broken. Uh -huh. So for me, at least speaking from experience, I had this identity of myself of being a success of being this personal trainer, this X, Y, and Z, this ambitious guy. And when my external world did not reflect that, that's where my identity shifted. When I realized your profession is not your identity, being a husband, father, wife, whatever, that's not your identity. It's really who you are deep down inside is your identity. Yeah. And once we come to terms with that, that's where we accept the real version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So you like that, right? Carlo, we've, I've got one minute because I don't have the pro. Let me end this, come back and we carry on. But I would keep yeah, remember yeah. what you're saying because I need to get the pro version. This was the first time I've ever done it. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. Right, no, I've done the same thing, man. Yeah. All right. Give me two minutes. If that. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. No issues. So anyway, yeah. So back to the identity, what you were saying. I think that's so true. I, because yeah, so for my story, it was about, I wasn't achieving anything. Mm. And that really, really got me down. So I was working a dead end job in a warehouse. I hated it so much. And I've always prided myself in someone that can go to the very top or should be the top of something, but I was never there. I always thought I was really intelligent in school. I thought, oh, I can always do this. So I did, oh, yeah, if he can do it, I can do it. Yep. But then if I didn't do it, that would put me down a little bit. But then if I played football, or you know, as soccer, I would be like, well, if he can do it, then I can do it. And if, yeah. and if he achieved what I didn't, I'd be like, oh, fuck. And as I got older and got older, I kept the same mindset. I've always wanted to do better. I've always wanted to be that hard work. I get on, show people what I can do. And then... I tried to do YouTube for gaming videos. I was really into gaming. COVID happened. Obviously, the whole world's on lockdown. What can I do? Oh, I'm going to try YouTube. I bought this big setup. I thought, you know what? I'm going to get loads of subscribers. So many of them are going to come to me because I'm going to be funny. I'm going to give everyone what they want. And I was like, but it just didn't happen. So I was like, oh, I was like, well, that's a bit of a bummer, isn't it? Yeah. Carried on. And it was all just the same thing. I just wasn't getting what I thought I should be getting. And that, that's what like really spiraled me down. I thought, if I'm not getting it, and like you said, that's not your identity. But at the time, I felt like that was my identity. And if my identity wasn't there, then what am I doing? Where am I? What's going on? Yeah, yeah. So like even the conversation with you already is made me look back at that even in more depth than what my therapist did. Oh, and that's a crazy thing too. Yeah. And what's so funny is that what I thought about it too is because you and I are very similar is I realize, and maybe you can agree with me on this, maybe not, but I realized I had this subconscious need for significance and mm -hmm. for validation. Because if this person can do it, then I can do it. But really deep down, it was because I had a lot of self-doubt and I wasn't validating myself. I didn't love myself enough to say I was good enough. Mm -hmm. So that's why a big part of that ambition came from, oh, if this person can do it, I can do it. And I compared myself to others a lot. And I really had this need for significance because I needed that validation to prove to myself I was good enough. And I looked for everything outside of myself instead of looking in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because even like when you were saying that then, I always remember my father was always saying to me when I was playing football, he was always like, Lou, you're a big, strong lad. You know, you've got big legs. You know, you should be able to bounce people off the ball. Like, keep the ball safe. Get it playing. And if I'd never done that, I felt like I wasn't getting approval from him, even though he would not care. But in mm. my head, I was like, oh, my God, he's told me I'm big and strong, but I can't seem to do it right now. Mm. And, yeah, that's just one thing that really comes to mind from my childhood. And I've probably brought that into my adulthood without even mm. realising it. Oh my God, Carlo, you're opening up. I'm going to start. I'm going to leave this conversation <laughs> soon and just really sit back and look back on my life. <laughs> well, it's amazing, it really is amazing when, like, 
when you speak to someone, you can bring a completely different perspective, such as yourself right now. How much you can sit there and pick apart why you like this or why did I feel like this or and then try and connect the two. Yep. Oh my god, that's amazing. That's really good. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And like well, it's all about and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's all about your identity and knowing who you actually are and not is it not who you actually no, sorry. Is it about who you actually are and not who you're trying to be? Would you say? Exactly. Because yeah. I feel like once you really pinpoint your authenticity and who mm. we really are. So for me, I am a caring person. I am a I am somebody who would give their shirt off for somebody if they were cold. Right. Yeah. I just I am a giver. I am a servant. I am a a lover. You know, not like only romantically speaking, but like I just I have such a big heart. Yeah. And, you know, I want to help people. I'm caring. And that's that's my authenticity. You know what I mean? I feel like once I convey that, everything external comes my way. You know, the success, you know, the the results. And once I learn to let go of all that external stuff and really get to know the real me, that's where the thing, like the doors started opening up for me. Yeah. So I think once we accept ourselves, you know, and act as ourselves instead of what society might say, instead of what we think like the significance and the validation we need to prove ourselves like if we just push that all away and accept it ourselves be authentic and act like that every day that's where things start to come in mm. how does one then identify that in themselves if you could give them any advice because some people would find it harder than others oh yeah of course yeah well just like what we just did you know of being self-aware and analyzing our past analyzing oh you and i were really ambitious people are an ambitious people you know we wanted that significance because deep down we said to ourselves subconsciously i'm not good enough so yeah. there's a self-worth issue there's a self-doubt issue so it's coming to terms with who you are it's really yeah. just loving yourself at first and that's what i had to deal with is i had to love myself first and that's where I started to show my real authentic self. Mm -hmm. So if we all take a minute, a couple of minutes, and just step back and just really analyze what our issue is, if you go a few layers beneath it of why this happened, why we felt this way, what caused us to feel this way, and we just ask ourselves why like seven times, you're going to find the answer Yeah. when you go deep down like that. Yeah, because I always remember Jordan Peterson or Jordan B. Peterson, should I say, given his full title, he said, if you ever want to know who you truly are, sit on your bed one night and be honest with yourself and you won't like the answers that you find out. Mm. And uh, that's always resonated with me so much that for, to find out who you truly are, you will, you will honestly tell yourself things that you will not like because you are not being authentic to yourself, as you say, that you're trying to be this other person and you realize that it's not you and you've maybe been living this life that, in a sense, you could have been wasting time or anything like that, but you're not actually that person. So stop trying to chase this doppelganger that you're trying to be where it's just the same skin as you, but it's not actually you. And yeah. I, I think that a lot of people do need to bring that on with themselves a lot more. A lot, lot more. Yeah, 100%. On, yeah, honest conversations are definitely the way to go. Mm. I couldn't have said it better. Yeah. It, it, when it comes to yourself, though, as well, with clients, have you ever had any issues with clients where it's been really tough going with them? They've, it's even got to yeah. you sometimes where it's really dawned on yourself because it's not an easy profession that you're doing, to say the least. No, absolutely. And it's kind of funny that you mentioned that because there's this one client that comes to my mind and he was the one that actually spoke to you last. And when we first started, he was exactly like me. It was a couple years ago. You know, whatever I said, no, 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 it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It, I tried this. It, it failed. But once we started asking better questions, that's where we started finding breakthroughs, mm. right? So it is draining, you know, to, you know, have people like that, you know, but, but I know what it's like, you know, so 
I, from that experience, I've developed a lot of patience, a lot of empathy and sympathy. So I know what they're, where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. So there is, I have this like somewhat of an unfair advantage because I have this experience. So I can definitely manage it in a, an efficient way. But what I realized is to help find breakthroughs, we need to ask better questions because the que- the type of questions we ask determines the quality of our life. So yeah. the quality of the questions we ask determines the quality of our life. So if we ask ourselves over and over again, why did this happen to me? Why, 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 why can't I do it? That's a closed question. But if we ask ourselves, what else can I do? What's another thing I can try? What can I learn? That's an open question. Mm-hmm. And when I made a couple of shifts with him, that's when his brain started to accept more variety of answers because of those open questions. And that's when his brain started working and said, huh, okay, maybe you're right. And now I'm proud to say he's the happiest he's ever been. And I'm not just saying that just to sound fancy. Mm-hmm. Like he was literally telling himself and telling me at the beginning, I'm a failure. Nothing will ever work. I have just this destiny of depression. That's who he was. Now he's the happiest guy ever. Mm-hmm. He literally does not have depression anymore. I love that. Do you reckon then when it, when it comes down to men, so we can use the, your client, you can use yourself, you can use me. We are naturally fixers. That's what we've always been labeled as. Men are naturally fixers. But when it comes to ourselves, and we open, we use the questions of open and uh, open questions, not closed questions. Sorry, do you reckon that's where we thrive then? Because we're there to fix something. Then, what can I do better? How can I do this better? It's all about trying to make the next step of step one, step two, step three. Okay, I've got to do this, then do this, and then do that. And when it comes to ourselves, that's where we thrive because we are fixing ourselves with the open yeah. questions. Absolutely, 100%. When you're solution-oriented, that's where breakthroughs happen. Yeah. I'll just say, I'm not going to lie, you, you're teaching me so much, Carlo. <laughs> Why are you teaching me so much? And you're going to help me a lot along the way with <laughs> my podcast, with helping others, how I think. Because I, like, I started this podcast thinking that, you know, I'm going to be able to help a lot of people. I've been through a lot, but you're teaching me that I've still got so much to learn. And I already knew that. But you teach me that I've got even more to learn than what I need to learn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that it helps, man. You know, that brings me joy. I know. Um, do you know what, mate? Thank you very much and all that for yourself. Um, don't worry, I'm not closing. I'm not getting off. I'm just saying thank you. <laughs> yeah. Of course, brother, of course. Uh, have you had any clients, though, or any issues in your life where it might have set you back a bit, though? Oh, uh, like for me personally, like set me yeah. back. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be set you back miles away, but maybe set you back a couple of steps where you've had to dig deep again. Honestly, no, and yeah. I don't say this to boast or anything like that. It's because I become, and again, I'm not saying this to brag, but everything I've learned has become another tool in my toolbox. Mm. You know, if I were a sports team and I'm writing a playbook. I'm just adding more plays to the playbook. So whenever it comes my way, I know what I can pull out of my toolbox to use. And I use it and it helps me. Mm-hmm. And I've been able to perform at the high level I have been performing at for this long because I have the knowledge, the experience. I know what to do when something comes my way. Yeah. So I'm really proud to say that I haven't really been set back. Now, I'm not saying it won't happen ever because nobody's perfect. And I'm sure I'm going to have some setbacks here and there. But I have the tools. Mm-hmm. So if that does happen, I can fix it real quick. Yeah. What do them tools look like, if you don't mind going into that? Because someone might be able to take away from this and go, yeah, of course. Well, it, it's exactly what we've been talking about and a little bit more. It's, okay, if I'm in a mood and I'm depressed, I'm sad, angry, whatever, I need to change my state. Yeah. So I can't fix my problem in the same state. I need to move. I need to wake up. I need to change my physiology. And when I do that, I'm in a state of clarity and I feel better. Focus. The life you experience is the life you focus on. Mm -hmm. If you keep focusing on your shortcomings, if you keep focusing on what makes you angry, what makes you sad, what makes you anxious, fearful, that's exactly what you're going to get in return. So if you look around your room right now, your office, and you look for the color red specifically, and you keep trying to find red, and I keep asking you to find red, you do it. But then I ask you, Lou, what did you see with brown? 
you're not gonna be able to answer me mm -hmm. because you weren't looking for it. Yeah. So if you intentionally and consciously focus on the life you want, that's what you're gonna get in return. Yeah. And language, like I, I can, I'm giving you guys everything, you know, <laughs> language, <laughs> the questions you ask, if you ask better questions, you'll get better results. Mm -hmm. If you keep using language, in a certain way that makes you feel negative, that's the experience you're going to get. So the meaning you attach to an experience becomes the experience. So if you say, oh, this movie I saw last night was terrible. It was awful. The popcorn was stale. You know, there was a crying baby in the, in the movie, in the cinema, and it was an awful experience. But once I realized the words I'm using that describe the experience, it's only enforcing it more. Uh -huh. So there's so many things people can do. Those, those are just a few of the tools that people can use to fix the issue, to get them out of that state, get them in a state of power, put them in their right place. Yeah, because that, that's really interesting because I look at it from a similar way, but just a different technique. Yeah. I always try and find something that I'm grateful for in that situation or something that I'm happy about in that situation. So I could have a really bad day in work and go, oh, I don't want to work here anymore. I want to leave. I want to find a new job. But mm -hmm. then after I've had my little 30 seconds of huff and puff, I go, I don't know, but because I work in a school, I go, no, I love I love the staff that I work with. I, love, mm -hmm. I, I enjoy getting up for work. I enjoy going to work. I enjoy seeing people. I enjoy the work that I do, the, the lives that we change. And then that brings me right back down to make me then go, no, I love this job. At one point, I will leave because I've got things that I want to go and do with my life, but it helps me come back down to this, and it doesn't make it doesn't me change the experience. The yeah, it, it, it makes me go in and enjoy it again. And I walk around with a smile on my face and taking the mick out of everyone, taking the piss. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's, it is the right way to go about it. So, for instance, if you did go to the cinema and you went, this movie was terrible, and the popcorn was stay on, there was a crying baby, but then you could go, that experience was awful, but I had a great walk after it. The walk was really nice. And you, you'll forget about the, the cinema, and you'll only focus on that and go, oh, the weather was great. And we're walking down, we got some ice cream, maybe not in December time, but the principle <laughs> of it is there. But it's so true, isn't it? If you sit there and you can slate it, and you can just say all oh, these negative things, you're going to take that to bed with you that night and you're going to wake up still the same way. Absolutely. So yeah, that, yeah, that is definitely... Everything. Yeah. That's another thing you've taught me there, Carlo. Another <laughs> thing. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. It makes me, that's, that makes my day, man. That's, yeah. what, that's why. Yeah, that is it though, isn't it? It's, you're being authentic and you've given yourself a purpose and you've given the job a purpose and you're, you're allowing yourself to be the change in the world that you want to see. That's one thing that a lot of people, and I know that me and you probably live by that, by being the change that you want to see every day. Yeah. But how far do you want to take the life coaching? Do you have, how well, big is your ambition? How can I explain this? Is the, the like coaching and whatnot, that's like step one. Mm. right this is like the main thing so me speaking doing podcasts uh coaching one-on-one -on -one or doing in groups that's like step one of my plan yeah my end goal is i want to create a platform for everybody to thrive right mm -hmm. so do you know like the like the like better help no i can't say i do no I don't know if it's an international thing, but it's definitely prevalent here in America where better help is like this app that it's basically therapy, right? Mm -hmm. And people can do therapy from the comfort of their home. They can, you know, do it on their phones their laptops. Thing. It, it, it's basically this giant platform for doing good therapy. I want to create something 10 times better than that because I realize that humans are a tribal animal, right? We thrive in a community. We thrive with a team. That's how civilization started. And that's why in 2024, like we have built everything we have because we are a part of a tribe. Yeah. So what I wanted to do was create a platform for people who want to not only feel better up here, but perform at the highest level and live the best life possible. So I wanted 
let's say for example, you were a client of my little app or my little platform. I wanted you to have a team specifically working for you that incorporated, that involved a therapist if you need it, a life coach that can direct you in your future and what you want to, and how to actually achieve, achieve those goals. And then a personal trainer uh -huh. to get you right here, here, and here. So if you have a team dedicated and specifically working for you, you cannot fail. And that's what I want. That's what I want to create. That's like my five to ten year plan yeah. is create a platform where everybody can go and thrive. And where did that idea come from? Um, Was it just like one of them late nights thing? I want this. It's it was one of those like aha moments, you know, like mm -hmm. a light bulb, you know, because I've always been one of health. I've always been one to feel better to perform. And I understood that all these platforms, they only focus on one thing. Oh, therapy. Oh, uh, personal training. Like the there's like this app called Noom, I think. It's either like for like nutrition or something like that, but like None of these platforms tie everything together. So it's like the super center, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I remember like back in Italy, you know, uh, where my family comes from and I'm sure all over Europe, there's, okay, there's the pharmacy, then there's the meat market, and then there's the bakery. I wanted to create a one-stop shop where people can go and it's convenient as possible. And I felt like I, I'm just plugging the holes that the market is missing. And I'm trademarking this so nobody steals it, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, people can literally go in one place. And if they feel like they need therapy, personal training, and life coaching simultaneously, they can get that yeah. at the touch of their fingertips. Yeah. I like that idea. And make sure you, you do trade that. And I won't let anyone over this side of the water copyright <laughs> that either. Because that is too oh, yeah. good of an idea, man. That is too good of an idea. As I say, um, but Carl, man, is there anything that you want to talk about? Because I feel like I've spoke to you about everything that I can think of right now. And today, I am. I, this was a type of conversation that normally I would prepare for, but because of the type of guy that you are, I wanted to do a free flow. And I've yeah, enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed it. Um, but is there anything that you want to talk about? Like why you wanted to come on? Um, honestly. The biggest reason why I like podcasts and I like doing keynotes is I want to impact. You know, mm -hmm. if one person listening to this or watching this or vice versa, and they come in here and they learn something new and they leave with something new and valuable, then that's why I'm doing this. That's yeah. that's fulfilling my purpose. Is if they leave with more knowledge than they came in with. Yeah. And all I want to do is serve, man. And I just, I'm really glad that you gave me the opportunity to have a stage to speak on, to let my story be heard and let hopefully some of my teachings maybe resonate with somebody. So as a gift, what I wanted to do is anybody listening who wants to go a level deeper or really wants to overcome these limiting beliefs, that self-doubt and feel confident, fulfilled and have that purpose. I want to give you a free coaching call. No questions asked. I want to help. Yeah. So anyone that wants that coaching call, it's super easy. Just go to my Instagram, DM me that you were listening to this podcast, and I'd love to help you out. And that's really something I wanted to do. Yeah. And I will also help you with that by pushing out your content. And I'll also clip this little part as well, and I'll put it on my Instagram so then people can see this. So Thank maybe you, you don't have to sit around for an hour, and then they go, oh, now we've mentioned yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. But no, Carl, man, I will definitely push that out. I would clip this part. And even like some of the stuff that you put up, I'll share. Like maybe we're on a similar path. So I'm more than happy to, to help you out. But thank you, brother. So much. Thank you for finding the time to come on today. And I would like to say this isn't the last conversation that we have. Maybe we can speak again in a few months. And my setup That's might lovely. be a little bit better than having like my phone <laughs> as a light right now. I'll, I'll work a little bit on this, but for the first one, I'm quite happy. But I am. Um, have you got anything that you want to ask me before maybe we finish up? What is your goal with this particular podcast, with your particular mission, with this episode? What is it that you want to get out of it? For the podcast in general, 
I mean, even for the scars, because if I aim for the scars, I can reach out to more people. We can reach out to bigger guests. We can show that even your most famous, your most favorite celebrity goes through it. Your most favorite sportsman goes through it. And it's to give everyone an insight that we are only human and we do have bad days and we do have bad times, but it is not impossible. Like me and you right now, we're living proof that we've gone through them hard times and we've come out and we've come out stronger, better, and just better people than where we were in the past. Yeah. But for this podcast, man, it's to show that there's more professions in the world rather than just a therapist. It's to show that no matter who you are, what your story is, you've got people around you. You've you got a brother that loves you or a sibling that loves you and you can go on a trip that you never want to take and it could turn out to be the best thing that ever happens in your life. Even yeah, if Tommy yeah. Robbins isn't there, they can still be amazing. <laughs> exactly. As long, I, I want to say this, if you take that leap of faith, just give yourself one more shot, you're going to be really happy at the outcome. Yeah, and I completely agree with that. It's always just the next step that we need to take that's probably going to be the one to change our lives. Yes, sir. And if it isn't, then take another step. Yeah. Yeah. I know. But Carl, thank you for finding the time to come on today, mate. And I will try and make this podcast as perfect as I can, as I've never done a Zoom one before, but I will do everything I can in my power. But like I said, thank you for finding the time. And I have enjoyed myself so much, and I've also learned so much as well. I'm going to take this away and then go straight downstairs to my girlfriend now and go, listen, here's a load of open questions. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't thank you enough. You know, uh, I, I can just feel your energy from the screen. Mm. I feel the love. I feel the happiness, you know, and I just can't thank you enough for letting me be here. Let me be a part of your show. And I'm glad I can help, you know, and I just hope this helps a lot of people listening. And I just can't thank you enough. Yeah, it will do. Well, Carlo, like I said, this is not the last time we'll speak. We will catch up again in a good few months. Uh, all right. But well, Carlo, once again, thank you. And I hope you have an absolute amazing day, mate. An amazing life until we next week. You too, brother. Yeah. Right. Good luck with everything, man. Good luck. See you, brother. Thank you so much.